The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growl and a problem with us out there. We have the Dow Industrials up 22, NASDAQ down 18, S&P's up one and a half, gold flat. 1468. You got silver down a penny at $16.93. Light sweet crude off 58 cents, $57.14 a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the 10 year up six ticks, 129.11. The 30 year up 16 at 158.25. And King Dollar down 150 ticks trading 97.849. Euros at 110. The yen is at 108. And the pounds at 129 to 1 US dollar. And if you know, looked at this market right now, folks, again, it looks like there wouldn't be much action, but we had a monster action uh, fast and furious at, uh, was it about 8.30, right? It was. So maybe 8 o'clock, 8.30, somewhere around there. We uh, Markets for S&P was about 10 points in the positive. That was quite a move. And, yeah. you know, this was the uh, bottom line is that, I guess, some information from uh, uh, China that's saying that, okay, they, they think that... Uh, the bottom line is that uh, the tariffs aren't coming off and they're not as optimistic as Larry uh, Kudlow is out saying that we're going to have a deal. I don't know how that's surprising news. China thinks they had a deal on principle. And the guess, last time. Yeah, yeah. and, right. and uh, they're surprised right. that that didn't hold with President right. Trump. So we'll, we'll see if that's... Uh... You know, so we went from uh, 3127. Granted, now, the bottom line, folks, is that, you know, we hit all-time highs again last night. <laughs> last yeah. night you hit uh, 3127. Yep. Um, the thing that's amazing to me right now is that, you know, this market's been shaking everything off, right? Definitely. No doubt. You have Hang Sang went up last night, and you have the university basically in flames. So it's like, okay, that shakes that off, too. And then on top of that, now this is the ultimate one, I think. You got the uh, Saudi Arabia. Right? Yes. Okay. So they're doing the IPO that we've been hearing about. Saudi Aramco for their, yeah, sure. Forever, right? Yeah. It was supposed to come off at two billion, two trillion rather, going across the world. Now, guess what, folks? It's going to be a Saudi deal only. The the prince has already shaken down the wealthy again. <laughs> yes. To come in, and then this is this is pretty cool. Well, I'm saying cool and, and interesting, maybe. Yeah, and, and is and, a better and, word. Yeah, and then the central bank. He has the central bank change the leverage yes. for individual investors. What that just says to me is that screams that there's so much oil, it's unbelievable. And they just, they got to get this thing out because that's a currency for them, you know? So it's going to be intriguing watching this whole thing go because yeah. they don't have international money. Um, you know, they're going to push it out. And then what does happen when you push it out, then they get the paper. And the paper, of course, then you can start doing deals with the paper. You know, it's only going to be like, 1.9 percent. I heard it was 1.5 percent. Is that what it is? Yeah. Oh my God. I so mean, it's about 25 billion dollars that'll be pushed out to the public. Not right. even um, the amount of Alibaba, and the number comes in at 1.6 to 1.7 trillion. It's basically only going to be in Saudi markets, yeah. and they're going to basically just uh, allow as much lending as you want. And uh, there's tremendous pressure on locals. Which right. are the people they all locked up in that Ritz a couple years oh, back? Time. So, oh, they get a buy. So basically, they're they're just forcing the people that they locked up in the Ritz to, right. to buy shares of their state-owned oil company at a tune of you know 1.5 percent of the public um, of yeah. the state-owned company. Wow, it is, and it was you know, and it, there's a lot coming in terms of they had the road show going on in London, right? That was canceled. Yeah. So it's it was not even that it's not just going to be a U.S. event now. It's just going to be a straight out local event exactly yeah ultra wealthy Saudis getting pushed into it you know pretty wild let's yeah. go let's go see uh, when we take a look at the uh, the gold market out here so we had out here it was a very fast reaction out here this morning you know when when trade deal went south you know gold went north we went from about 1456 you're at 1469 yeah um, you know wills well 232,000 contracts not bad contract volume um, for 10, 20 in the morning. And we'll see, uh, you know, and we have big divergence, folks, inside this gold market right now. And this is what it is. 
If you look at Franco Nevada, right, Franco Nevada is right next to all-time highs. Now, both of these, F and B, yes. both these equities are going to bring up uh, royalty companies, okay? And royalty companies, basically, most of the time, are leading, they lead the gold market. That's what normally happens. So, picture it. Frank and Nevada is at 8, 98 77 The all-time high is 101.19. Now, that's really bullish, okay? That's, you know, you're, you're pushing that high. Last week, we pushed the high with volume. So that's the bullish side of it. Then the bearish side of it would be if you go to Royal Gold, and Royal Gold is trading at 115, yes. and that all-time high is 138. Yeah. Now, they had a problem with one of their investments, but that's still a big, you know, divergence in, yes. inside the marketplace. Yeah. So that's kind of where we are, I, I suspect, in that gold market, that you yeah. got to really keep your eye on it. Uh, the dollar, the dollar looks to me that it still wants to go lower. What is happening out here this morning is the British pound is getting a bid. Uh, okay. And once again, we'll be talking about this uh, in the next few weeks, I think. Yeah. So you can see that the pound is up, you know, 54 ticks. Nothing heavy, but it's pushing into the highs that were generated out there at the uh, middle of October. Maybe that's, um, I, I had heard there were polls released that Boris Johnson kind of strengthening his hold. Okay. Yeah. Over... Corbyn and the Labour Party, so maybe that's something that if you have the Prime Minister pushing for Brexit, there might be some more oh, certainty yeah. as to what happens if uh, on that election that he does get a more resounding right. vote in his way. And then we get the guy from Sprint, right? The guy from Sprint. Uh, uh, yeah, John Legere, Legere, yeah, so right. CEO there. T-Mobile, actually. T-Mobile, that's right, T-Mobile. Right. Um, CEO of T-Mobile, he's going to be stepping down next year, and the speculation is that he's going to be the guy at the helm of WeWork. Yeah. And there was also I, I I can't wait to see those ads, man, because you know his his ad with the uh, the he put us on the, the pink right away. He has his jeans on. He has the long hair. Sorry, the pink right away. Yeah, that that's what John Legia. That's what yeah. he's kind of famous for. Do you know what I mean? He changed all the marketing for okay. T-Mobile. You know okay. what I mean? And everything was pink, and he's got his long hair, and he's got okay. his leather jacket. I was on. not aware of that. I yeah. Maybe people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I saw the picture of him. Sure. Um. So he's stepping down. Looks like I just said up there, May of 2020. I saw another article. There we go. So in light of that, right, you got WeWork reportedly laying off thousands as it attempts to reverse its fortunes. I'm trying to pull that article up. But, man, talk about, I guess, as SoftBank steps in yeah. and they're saying, you know what, we just had to spend tens of billions practically for this company, man. Oh, yeah. So preparing to cut at least 4,000 jobs in a bid to achieve financial stability in these layoffs. And I had seen headlines earlier that... They're going to start to focus more on curtailing that cash burn and, and looking to a profit yeah. than the ridiculous nature of the growth. Because it's one thing when you get to push it out to the public, right? You right. can focus all on growth. Then you, you can push it. it all to the public. It's another thing when you realize you can't even push it off to the public and you're going to be the one that's solely supporting it. And so as many as 6,000 employees could ultimately be laid off, one person said. Last week, we were told investors it lost $1.2 billion. 1.25 billion on revenue of 934 million in the third quarter losses were up more than 150 percent same period a year ago. That takes work to lose that much money in 90 oh, days. Oh man! Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We're going to have Mark from New Hampshire. We are going to be talking gold. Dow, Dow Industrials right now up nine. Nasdaq's down 20. S&P's are up two and a half. Come right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we have the Dow down 11, NASDAQ off 28, S&P's off 4.5. Let's just look at the NASDAQ for a second, because when you were doing that update this morning, the NQs, they really got, uh, it seemed like they got smoked a little bit more than the S&P. I just want to see from high sure. to low where we went for. A, well, I guess uh, overnight, but we went from yeah, 83.45. Nah, no, one bar bad. lower. Here. Yeah. Yeah, 8279. Oh, yeah. So 65 points. Okay. But the S&Ps are pretty close, man. Yeah. The S&Ps no, no S&Ps uh, lost 15 points or something, you know. I mean, yeah. they they were all around half a percent. Heartbeat. Half a percent? Boom. Nothing to shake, you know. No. no. Let's go to Mark in New Hampshire. What's going on, brother? Bonjour from Bamako, Mali. Oh, really? Quite a difference from New Hampshire. I like it. <laughs> so, That's what I'm saying. Mali, West Africa, right? Yeah, it's double the size of Texas. Wow. Okay, so feed us. Give, give us an education here. Tell us what you're doing and what, what, what's looking like there. Okay, so there's multiple business opportunities there. And I'm focused in on buying uh, permits. To, that Some of these permits have 400 kilometers square of land that's been previously drilled, and we're re-drilling them Okay. prove what's there um because i don't always trust 10 15 year ago drilling reports and we can drill adjacent to them and then find out so if the devaluation is a little bit more legit yeah but you can buy like a property like that that has gold really just even surface gold but down low down 15 20 feet where there's hundreds of thousands of ounces for a million bucks but then, then but that's awesome. Then you get to build the mine, right? And then get the gold out and make a deal with yeah. the government, right? So my my idea is just to sell the permits for okay. other people, yeah, and start a company that way. And then what I also found out there is you could buy physical gold bars for eleven hundred per ounce. Wow, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, and then go to Kuwait and get rid of them. That's and pretty... you can have a license to do that directly. 
supply there. Bang. And Bye. right now we're trading at fourteen seventy. So if you can move some product, um, that's some real bread. <laughs> yeah. So that's. I mean, that's it. We're going to make our first deal. I'm trying to find out which the next. I know there's some conference and this and that and uh, in New York, and I know there's a big conference in Toronto in March. But I I've, I got three con three permits right now. And I promised them I try to get a deal done before April first. That's all they're giving me with these specific permits. Um, so, so that means you that know. you get—is this like buying a house? So you get an option on a house until so you get an option on the permits until yep. April, and then you got to come up with the bread. Is that what we're talking about? Right. Right. Okay. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to be selling permits, and um, you know whatever I get is. Could be a lot more than what they're asking. Now, are sure. you, are you, you going to try to do this in the aspect of like opening what a Canadian company as a, as a small cap, or how are you going to do this, Mark? I just no. I just want to find a buyer to make a deal so I have cash flow. Okay. I have cash flow in the okay. company. So I'm I'm trying to, you know, I I met with B2 Gold out there and their mines near where we have. Okay. And they just declared a one cent dividend, um, but there's. There's a really a lot of, lot of undiscovered gold in large quantities, all through West Africa. There was a problem last week in Burkina Faso where a couple of uh, Americans were shot on the road or something like that. But uh, you know the point is is that I was super, super secure and safe where I was. I didn't have any problem just taking a taxi and driving around the main city, which is two million people. Okay. And uh, I was there for, they, they call it JMP. It was a mining conference. And um, got to meet all the politicians from West Africa, uh, all the governments, and uh, the president of Mali. He's a cool guy. And the, and the whole thing is, is that, you know, this business model will work. And then maybe at some point we become a, a listed company. I don't know. I mean, I'm not really. So what time you know. is it in Mali right now? Uh Five hours ahead. Oh, that's not so. bad. Nice. And you have, con you have connection. You get a good connection. So that means that basically telecommunications is fine, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's essentially Verizon in Africa. Okay. Um, Ten bucks a day. So that's not a bad deal. No. That's great. Not if it's reliable, right? right. Exactly. That's right. not at all. Yeah. yeah. I get, you know. No, you sound days. great. Sound better than some callers we get in the U.S.? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. But anyhow, I mean, so the whole point is is that, um, you know, I see gold going higher, and how long it takes, I don't know. But what you said about the contract and stuff is, is beautiful. I, I think, you know, if there's a chance, Tom, that I could talk to you offline of I don't know how you could help me. I mean, I read your gold report. I've been I read the first report and still read it to today. Um, you know, it, I just like to come down there and see. Maybe I could meet with you. If yeah, let, let me let me. I love that. Let me ask you something. The the gold that you're saying that you're going to get per bar at, at eleven hundred, right? Is that essayed? Yeah. Is it essayed by someone? Yeah, definitely. That's interesting. And the is there the, the license for the exportation? What what does that run? It's not much. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the thing is, is that my business partner is a. Uh, I have two. One one of them, he's a Mali national. Yeah. And he's a professor at Harvard. Okay. In African languages. Yeah. And he's got amazing political connections. And um, it's really not as difficult as you would think. Yeah, no, hey, listen, it's a, it's a small business. There's no doubt about that. What, yeah. I, what I'm finding just kind of hard to comprehend is that if you can get gold at 11 and sell it all day at 14.71, these gold companies should be making a lot more money. <laughs> Do you yeah. know what I mean? Well, that's the problem. <laughs> you see, you understand? They, they, they're not. And the, and the reasoning is because... Um, they're still in the process of building their mines. Yes. You know? Right. So they're taking capital and buying, you know, expanding mines. And that's why, I mean, if you look at IM Gold, they're, they're there. 
you got B2 Gold. Yeah. Um, you've got uh, the big dog was there this week, Barrick. Yeah, Barrick is I the biggest. That, they got the biggest position there. I mean, what happened is that, you know, when Mark Brisbane, when he basically. Bristow. You know, Bristow. When he div divvied up all those mines years ago, um, he went to West Africa. And West Africa does, on paper, have the most amount of gold that in the world that has not been, you know, mined yet. Because, of course, what, let's see. Let me say, if you're north, there's less problems. South, there's still some heavy, uh, you know, revolutionary problems. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's actually better than most people would understand. Yeah. Hey, stay, stay right there. We'll, we'll come right back right. to you, Mark. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are going to come back from Mark. We, uh, this is pretty cool. We got, uh, we got a miner in uh, Mali. That's right. West Africa. There we go. Come right back, folks. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down 15. Nasdaq's off 31. S&Ps are off 6.5. We're talking to Mark, and Mark happens to be in Mali, West Africa right now. So, Mark, where are you in northern or southern? Is it southern where the basically you get almost like Bamanco. a mini civil war going Bamanco. on? Bamako. I'm sorry? Bamako. They call it Bamako, Mali. It's the main okay. city. It's got 2 million people. And where, where is the social unrest in Mali? 
up north because you have ISIS, ISIL, and Al Qaeda near Timbuktu. Up north, the, is okay, versus south. Yeah, okay. with it, it's like huge. It's just like, like if you're in Provincetown, you know, you go in northern New Hampshire to get up there. I see. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, you got the French uh, the, from France um, up there with the UN trying to protect some things, but. Really, what they're interested in is in the uranium mines up there and the gold that's still in the ground. Sure. So it's kind of sketchy, and I don't, I would really wouldn't want to go and do have anything to do with any of that. So yeah, that that makes point sense. Is that, yeah, I mean, what, where the gold is is on the border of you got Burkina Faso, Niger, and Guinea. And I met the president of Niger, Guinea. I didn't meet somebody from from Burkina Faso, but right on those that border area, it's safe. It's, it's, you know, whether or not people are Islam, Islamic doesn't mean that they're not, that they're, they're just like, most of them aren't, you know, strong practicing Islamic people that we, we see on TV here that are, want to kill everybody. That's right. foolishness. Right. They're just nice people. That's right. it. Right. Well, so, listen. You know, you you have to have good security, but that's not that expensive either. No, I can I can picture that. Well, listen, we appreciate the update. You stay safe. When are you coming back to New Hampshire? Tonight. Tonight. Okay, oh. man. Well, you have a safe trip, and we look forward to speaking again, Mark. Thanks for the update. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll email you, Tom, and cool. I'd like to come to Tampa and do a little kind of presentation, and I could use some help on contact. Yeah, bring bring about bring about fifty gold bars with you, Will. All right, next time I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> this time I don't have fifty with me. <laughs> okay, All man. Right. You have a great one, a safe one, man. Thanks so much. All right, take care. So we gotta jump. I'm gonna oh, jump away from the market a little bit. Yeah. Just uh, you know, like to mix in a little bit of interesting stories with a full hour market news. But man, oh man, this talk is about. So um, if you heard about it last week, right? I mentioned you hadn't heard about some people had. So last week, you had two people in China confirmed of having the mnemonic plague. All right. Now, with this story out this morning, bubonic plague confirmed in China after a hunter eats a rabbit in Inner Mongolia. So you have a hunter killed who ate a wild rabbit on Mongolian steppe, contracted bubonic plague. Chinese health officials, the hunter, 55-year-old man, contacted, contracted the disease, excuse me, disease November 5th and came into contact with 28 people. They've been quarantined. And as I said, the diagnosis comes amid tension after two people there were confirmed to have the pneumonic plague. And, um, and that was in Beijing. That's, yes. Okay. So yes. That's, that's, that's pretty uh, it, is it is tension in Beijing? That's the capital of China. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're just referencing, you know, tensions in China. Um, nonetheless, man, just uh, remarkable stuff. And I looked it up. So the plague known in the Middle Ages as the Black Death, responsible for killing about 50 million people in the 14th century, periodically resurgent in centuries have followed. In the late 1800s, the, the disease killed millions in China and Hong Kong. As in it the spread. late 1800s, that's not that long ago. No, it is not. Um, now it's manageable and treatable with antibiotics if diagnosed early. Also, still 3,200 cases between 2010 and 2015, 584 fatal. Wow. And the, the bubonic plague is the most common. 30 to 60 percent of the people die after contracting it. Now, here's where it's interesting, though. I was just Googling because I was trying to figure out, because there weren't that many people around in the 14th century, right. not like now, right? Right. So when, when I Googled this at first, right, I want to get this stat here because this is what pops up. I Googled percentage of uh, people killed away, you know, the Black Death estimated to kill 30 to 60 percent of Europe's population. In total, the plague may have reduced the world's population from an estimated 475 million to 350 million. Right. That is a mammoth. That's a quarter of the people in the whole world that got hit by it. Uh, just a remarkable thing. Yeah, Pretty well, interesting. You know, it's amazing, too. So picture that in the whole world, after that occurrence, it was yes. 350 to 375. Yeah. And in the United States right now, we have about 330. Yeah. Just right. the United States. Exactly. So that would be like that many people just in the U.S. Now, if you put it on a percentage basis, right, what are we running in the world right now? We're at 6 billion. Seven billion. Yeah, if you know. ever lost a quarter of the percentage of the people, that'd be 1.5 billion people to put things in percentage. Um, just a remarkable story, man. I mean, hopefully it's just as they say it happens, but two cases of that, pretty interesting. Oof.
Jumping back to the market, giving some market news we referenced at the top. So the CEO of T-Mobile, John Laguerre, he is going to be replaced by Mike Sievert. May 1st, that happening. So you got Laguerre, and they, they, they call him the shaggy hair itself, appointed industry rebel, led T-Mobile out of fourth place among wireless carriers to the brink of a merger deal with Sprint, leaving April 30th. And um, pretty interesting here. T-Mobile down about 2.2% on that trading. Since he was named CEO in September, on September 19th, 2012, T-Mobile has generated more than a five-fold return for investors, including dividends compared with only, yeah. I say only, I mean, it's been quite a run for the S&P right. as well since then, but the S&P up 148%. And uh, hey. as we've mentioned, he is rumored to be a candidate. And I would suspect with this news coming in light, with SoftBank being so involved with T-Mobile and Sprint, exactly. that uh, I would say that that is... Uh, Right. Uh, it, high probability. It is, cause, because when he took over T-Mobile, too, T-Mobile did not have the name. They, they were going sure. from, uh, uh, the, like, the radio network. They were, big, they were a big outsider, too. Yeah. yeah. They, there was radio to radio. That's how they actually okay. started. So it was, you know, but bottom line, he did it, man. I mean, that's pretty fivefold, right? Like yeah. People love T-Mobile. Yes. You know? Um, yeah. You know, we just had Bestman. Bestman changed from T-Mobile folks to Sprint. He got rid of Sprint in a second. Now, I've always said Sprint, so, I'll, you know, he says, I don't know how you like Sprint. And, and, well, if you don't know the difference, then this is, yeah, you know. Yeah, But uh, the bottom line is that uh, No, they're, they're, they're a it. player in the field, and to be a player in the field when you're competing with AT&T, yeah. Verizon, right? I mean, so there's much huge money. players. So much money. Uh, so, Seaver, the guy stepping in is, as CMO, Chief Marketing Officer, and later as Operating Chief was the brains behind many of T-Mobile's popular initiatives. Yeah. So it looks like he's a big player stepping into oh, those yeah. roles. In his seven years at T-Mobile, the 49-year-old executive ran the Uncarrier campaign, which featured no contracts, unlimited data plans, and free Taco Tuesdays. <laughs> free Taco Tuesdays. I don't know how that applies, but everybody likes Taco Tuesdays. No, <laughs> totally. Totally. So that'll be interesting to see how it plays out that's, for sure. Yeah, it's going to be. And, you know, if we go back to WeWork for a second, I was reading uh, in Tampa. Yes. Right? So the WeWork is in Tampa. And what the article was about is that they had already taken four floors of one of the big buildings okay. downtown. They were going to take two more floors, and they're not quite sure what they're going to do. But they, they, they expected to get 6,000 people, and there's no one in there right now. And, you know, they're going to work on it. Maybe that's why they're going to be laying off some people. Yeah, yeah, slightly. Dow, Dow Industrial's off 27, NASDAQ down 23, S&P's off 5. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. back folks appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here we have the dow down 12 nasdaq off 16 s and p's off two and a half not bad but coming off the highs uh you know you're off the highs a bit but guess what you are still at highs as you come over to our website at tfnn guess what tomorrow is november 19th and what is november 19th our man mr basil chapman is going to be doing a great webinar for all his subscribers from 5 to 6 30 eastern standard time you got it man the opening call, Basil's going to be in there with subscribers. Comprehensive review of the Chapman Wave techniques and market outlook ahead. 2020. 2020. It's November 18th, man. We got Thanksgiving coming down the pipeline. We got Christmas coming down the pipeline. We got New Year's coming down the pipeline. Oh, my God. 2020. This is uh, always the time of the year I feel like it really flies by, man. Because, you know, um, the one day that we are actually closed, usually, that the market may be open is the right. Friday after Thanksgiving. Exactly. It's a half a day. Right. But it makes zero sense, folks. You know, hopefully right. you take that day off if you're a trader as well, because right. there's not much going on on most occasions. So we'll be closed that Friday. And then, of course, you come in. I mean, you're at the beginning of December, man. You got to do some shopping. You got yeah. holiday parties. You got what going on. So, Basil, tomorrow night, 5 till 6.30, a 90-minute webinar. I know Basil's been working hard on this. He announced this about two weeks ago. So he's been taking subscriber feedback, asking for questions, looking at the stocks that they had this year. Basil's had some great winners this year already, 15 to 30 percent intra-year winning trades. And by request, Basil's going to review kind of how he looked at those, the techniques he used, setting up those successful analysis. That includes rhythm of price movement in all time frames, the practical application of the moving averages. We all have seen, hopefully, if you haven't, check out his show every day at noon. Right. Um, those moving average lines he's got all over his charts that he is always using, convergence, divergence the arc and cup formations, the Chapman wave notation. So 90 minutes. And Ride that way. He's also going to be looking at what kind of sectors, man. I'm, I'm interested to see what Basil has to say in terms of what's going to be driving things in 2020, sectors and stocks of importance going into 2020. We'll ask Basil, is Apple going to be up like another 90% yeah. in 2020, Basil? And know. it's real easy to get into, folks. You just come over to the website. You're going to go right under <coughs> featured content. You'll see the uh, opening call there. You can hit subscribe. Now, you can go in for a month, six months, or a year. A month's $128. Six months, $595, which is a savings of $173. A year's $995, which is a savings of $541. They all come with 30 30-year member That's right. guarantee. That's right. So I encourage people, you know, get in there for six months, get in there for a year. If you don't like it after 30 days, give right. us a call. Let us know. Ask for a refund, boom, right. you're done. You right. know, and, and you, you still get a great webinar. You sure do. And you get 30 days of the opening call. Basil put out. Newsletter updates over the weekend. He's always putting out updates for his subscribers. And you also get the archived webinars. This webinar will be archived literally by the next morning, if not the same night, just depending on how long that takes to produce. 90-minute long webinar. It'll be archived right on your members page along with a plethora of other webinars. So you can really make use of that time over the 30 days. You can in there, check out those webinars. Um, 
you know, it's remarkable that one of the webinars he has up there yeah. is from last year. So he does one usually about every couple months for subscribers. Right. So he's got five up there. You go all the way back to last year. The Chapman Wave tools that helped identify the market's last top and what to expect as we go into the new year. Wow. That was last year. So you can compare them if got you it. want. Check yeah. them out. But this will be interesting with market basically at all-time highs. Checking yeah. out the peak E's, D's, F's. Basil filled in, I believe, one day last week or so. We were looking at the market. Yeah, I, was at, I was asking yeah. him, um, right. um, or maybe it was two weeks ago, that he was, I was on with him. You, I was yes, mean, you know, right. talking about those peaks. And uh, it's always interesting, man, with the market at all-time highs, checking out those peaks for sure. There's no doubt. So let's go. Let's go I want to take a look at this Dow Industrials for a second. So we know that, uh, I, well, I'm, I'm curious whether it went into a new all-time high when the market was open. Yeah, it did. Okay, so we got up to a new all-time high even when the market was... What is it? 28,030. Okay. Yeah. Look and at that price tag. 27,999. Go ahead, sir. There right. are 28 oh, on the dot. Oh, look at that. Isn't yeah. that pretty? So, uh, Basil loves his round numbers, I man, know, as well. Man. We're at we're 3,100 in the, the S&P, 28,000 yeah. in the Dow. Man, oh, we, Disney's getting a little bit of a pop. You know, I didn't see Disney. They had that. quite a pullback. We, I'm just going to pull yeah. this up real quick yeah. because I hadn't been keeping my eye on Disney. I let them go for a couple days. And boy, Same they had you. quite a retracement, man, over Thursday and Friday. So, uh, yes, Wednesday was the day they announced 10 million subscribers. Right. Tuesday's the day they go live on Disney+. Plus. Yep. Middle of the day, noon, they come out and say we already have 10 million people signed up. HBO Go took four years to get 10 million people. Right. You open 10 million. You open it at basically a new all-time high for Disney, 150.63, and by Friday you close it out at 144, man. But it's, I mean, to put things in context, you went into their last earnings, which was only about a week or two ago, at right. 132. Right. And you're still certain sitting, you could. $14, almost 10% above where their earnings were when they started talking about that's when they first announced that they were going to have deals with Amazon devices so yeah. you could get everything in there. And um, Verizon, right? That's, that's a a, exactly. Deal. So you had some big numbers Can there. Can we just put yep, the Bloomberg up back, for a second? For I just want to put Disney up on this. I'm just, I'm, I suspect we pulled back with tremendously lighter volume. I would agree. You know, yeah. you have to expect some of those pairings. Right. I mean, you don't the, go. Look at this. Look at yeah. this. This is sick, folks. Is. Okay. So we go higher yeah. with 46 million. Shares. Yep, and that's again the day they announced yeah. the 10 million. You pull low at 13 million. Yeah. That's what you'd love to see. Yeah. That's and it know. was just kind of people yeah. saying, okay, all right, you know, everybody bought that was buying. There oh. was a little bit of waned. Listen, you, you, if we did five, ten, yeah, okay, you can go back 12 trading days and you're at 128. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's, that's and that, pretty intense. That is, I think, uh, is that the day of their earnings closing out? Yeah. So that's the day of their earnings. Before their earnings, they come out after the bell. Yeah. They open at about 140, pull back again. They launch on Tuesday, the 12th. They announce the following day they got 10 million people. And uh, today, right back up there, man. Yeah. So we get a question about Amazon. You know, Speaking Amazon, of the other giant. Yeah, and Amazon hasn't been able to hold price. You know, so this little baby's been down here as we're at all-time highs. Uh, you know, we're at 17.45. It's up $5.83. Last high was uh, 2035. My take is that he's just he's trying to get down at this 1672. And that's not the end of the world, by the way, folks, okay? <laughs> because the way that Amazon is, has been trading, we've been in a consolidation. Yeah. That goes all the way back to July of 2018. You know? And uh, Bezos has got to get some energy, man. He's now the number two richest man yeah. in the world. So maybe he's, yeah. he's, he's a little bit pumped up and got some new, uh, some new drive behind that Amazon CEO desk as Microsoft and Bill Gates retains it yet again the first time in a while. The, yep. And that's based off closing prices. He had it again intraday a while back, but uh, Gates as of Friday with the run Microsoft has had, number one richest man. And it's pretty remarkable what the amount of money he has given away already. Isn't it? To be, I mean, yeah, you're seriously. talking about almost 40 years, right? From 1980, the 80s were when he came to be, right. we're about to be in the 2020s, and you still have Bill Gates uh, up there, let alone the whole Gates, um, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, that I they've know. given all that money. Yeah. Netflix, Netflix catching a little bit out here this morning. It looks like it wants to basically test that, you get a high volume swing point up here of 308. We're at 302, uh, 88 right now. Okay. You know, but this is, this is, Netflix definitely has a challenge. Excuse me. You know. Oh, that's, yes. That's, you saw a pullback on that same day that Disney announced theirs because there's a little bit of fear in the market that said, hold on a second, Disney's going to come for their lunch that quick? Yeah. And then Roku, okay, plat, you know, platform-wise, this baby, uh, you're up four bucks again. 
I mean, talk that, about a seesaw action, isn't man. it? The high is 176. You know, you get a shot position. Now, this is this is what this is one of the drivers. Well, that's not that bad, actually. That shot position's down to 9.7%. Okay. That's not bad at all. Stay right there, folks. Tell me I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30% this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the Dow Industrials up 12, NASDAQ is down 10, S&Ps are flat. And you can get ready for a couple tweets out there, folks, because uh, just coming across <laughs> the Bloomberg was that uh, you just had uh, Mnuchin, Trump, and Powell have a meeting, evidently. That's what it says. So yeah. you got Chairman Powell met with President Trump and Treasury Secretary Mnuchin Monday to discuss the economy, growth, employment, and inflation. The central bank said Powell's comments, quote-unquote, were consistent with his remarks at congressional hearings last week. The Fed said in a statement released after the meeting at the White House, Quote, he did not discuss his expectations for monetary policy except to stress that the path of policy will depend entirely on incoming information that bears on the outlook for the economy. I wonder if uh, we'll get some, some tweets, as you say. I think we will. I think Watch that tweet. That these interest rates are way too high. Man. That's right. There's, there's, we need negative interest rates like the rest of the world. There's, there's, there's no and we need a worthless dollar, says our president. Yeah. There so that, uh, that one would really be intriguing. Yeah. You know? Um, so, if we look at the rates, I think it's 1.89 or 1.87. 1.82, 1.83. Oh, look at this. Yeah, yeah, I saw 1.82 this morning. So okay, we've got so 1.79 right now. Okay. 
Uh, um, we look at the the curve because it's separated quite a bit, man. That yes. two to ten. Check it out now. More than a solid two tenths of a percent now. We're at one point five eight on the two year, one point seven nine on the ten year. Quite a separation. As uh, that should point to some some growth between the two and the ten. Oh you know, yeah, which is what yeah. uh, that's, you you want. No, well, and that's what the banks need too. That's right? what we all need, man. They that's what we spread. all need. Yeah. We, we need growth between two years out and ten years out because if not, that's going to be a tough eight years. There, there's, there's no doubt about yeah. that. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. We got our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks and TD Meritrade coming up next. Then our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Well, go get him, folks.